following program contains graphic images and language. Viewer discretion is advised. Static thing on one one location of your emergency. We need an ambulance out of Bonanza Creek Ranch right now. We've got two people shot on a movie set. Two people accidentally shot by a prop gun. For that specific shot, it was literally just supposed to be the gun being pulled out sideways. He was in communication with Miss Hutchins. And then he drew it again and it went off. Deep breath, deep breath, Helena. Oh, she said, I can't feel my legs. Alec Baldwin was the actor on set that pulled the trigger. Just because it's an accident doesn't mean that it's not criminal. She was my friend. She was my friend. I'm the armor. No, at least I was. One more, one more, one more. Alec is not exactly known worldwide for his even temperament. We should have had two guns and both were bringing loading. I never took a gun and pointed at somebody and clicked the thing. We're not asking you to be an armor, not asking you to be an expert in firearms, just asking you to be safe and use common sense. I kind of paced back and forth, wringing my hands, thinking, what do I do? There is no way for the court to right this wrong. When actor Alec Baldwin shot and killed cinematographer Helena Hutchins on a movie set in October of 2021, it sent shockwaves through Hollywood. His criminal trial, which took place almost three years later, would end up sending shockwaves through the legal community, ending in dramatic fashion in Santa Fe, New Mexico, the same place where he was filming the movie Rust. I'm Ted Rollins, and this is Victim to Verdict, the prosecution of Alec Baldwin. Mark. Set, set, ready, and action. In October of 2021, the movie Rust was in full production. One more, one more, one more. Mark. Rust is a Western, the lead actor, Alec Baldwin, playing the role of Harland Rust. Harland Rust? Rust is the story about a young kid in Kansas who accidentally shoots and kills a farmer, and he is sentenced to hang. Got a little fight to <laughs> Come on, little piggy. <laughs> The story goes on that his grandfather finds his grandson, helps him escape from prison, and they're on the run. No! The movie was being filmed on location at the Bonanza Creek Ranch in Santa Fe, New Mexico. New Mexico is a haven for filmmaking. It's been one of the most desirable places for landscapes and the tax incentives, of course. But it's so beautifully picturesque. And the Hollywood community has been coming out here since the 50s. Put your hand on it. The only thing hand out is about you. Joel Souza was the writer and director of the movie Rust, and he knew Alec Baldwin from the two of them working together previously on a movie called Crown Vic. Baldwin was a producer on that movie. We talked about doing another project together with him as an actor, and I had a couple of things in mind, one of which I wanted to make a Western, and uh, he thought that sounded interesting. And so he hired me to uh, write the script. It would be up to Joel Souza to find a director of cinematography for the movie. One of the candidates was a 42-year-old woman by the name of Helena Hutchins. 
in the back of my mind, I thought, this woman's gonna win an Oscar someday for best cinematographer. I just, like, I, I have I have DPs that I work with, and I think th this guy's good, and, and she's good, and, and things like that. But then there's a few that you see that, like, this person has talent. This person has what it takes to succeed. And, 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 and I saw that in Helena. She was a woman who was just in love with movies and movie making. She grew up on a Soviet military base where there wasn't much to do but watch movies. So she fell in love with movies uh, at a young age, came over here, uh, was really making a name for herself as a cinematographer. Between her work and her, you know, her background, I think she was kind of a no brainer to me. I, I asked the producers to uh, tell them that's who I wanted. Please don't bosh the deal. And uh, cause she's great. We met for coffee and it was about a week and a half or so before she went out to New Mexico for the for the pre-production work on, on Rust. You know, Rust was all consuming for her. This was everything that she was thinking about and what she her like her entire brain power was, you know, you know, already digging into in, in, into the shots that she wanted to get and, and how she wanted the film to look and how excited she was for the project. Once the movie is green lit. Russ Movie Productions is brought on as the umbrella company. At some point, the armor is hired. We should have two guns and both will bring it loading. I'd, I'd read portions of the script and I knew uh, that other people had turned it down based upon how much uh, gunfire there was in it, how many props were in it, because they were asking me to be the prop master and the armor. So I told them in the conference call I would not be the prop master on the show, that I'd be more than happy to do the armor. I was available to be the armor, and I had the time for it, and I knew that if I was the armor, that we could do the show very safely. And that's what I told them. The position of armor ended up going to an industry newcomer, 24-year-old Hannah Gutierrez-Reed. Hannah's father is Bell Reed. He is a Hollywood legend. He's not only an armorer, he's also a stuntman and an exhibition shooter, which is really what made him famous. Another person brought on to the production, someone with decades of experience, was first assistant director David Halls. First assistant director David Halls is hired. He's got a lot of experience, decades. He's been on dozens and dozens of sets involving firearms. The first AD is like the wedding planner for a movie. And and one of one of the most important jobs that the first AD has is the safety of the, the cast and the crew and everybody that's there on set. Specifically in this type of situation where you have firearms on set, it's the first AD's responsibility to make sure that all the checks are done. By early October of 2021, production of the film was underway, but there were early signs of trouble on the set. Several members of the crew were already upset with the safety conditions and upset with Hannah Gutierrez-Reed in particular. There had been two accidental discharges, one of them involving Alec Baldwin's stunt double. Hannah was prepping the stunt double in the cabin unannounced to any of us outside the cabin um, that firearm was discharged. Coming up. Deep breath, deep breath, Helena. I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel. She said, I can't feel my legs. It felt like somebody had taken a baseball bat to my shoulder. I got one of the little alerts on my phone. I was like, oh. Crap, that's the film that Helena's on. The following program contains graphic images and language. Viewer discretion is advised. On October 21st, 2021, the movie Rust had been in production for a few weeks at the Bonanza Creek Ranch just outside Santa Fe, New Mexico. It was a Western starring Alec Baldwin, who was also a producer on the project. The director, Joel Souza, and the director of cinematography, 42-year-old Helena Hutchins. This is the scene that was shot that day, just before the lunch break. So camera left for you. I'll sit right here. Blue so, out. so whip it out. Yeah. Okay, well, let me get this little greased. Ready? Okay, ready? Okay, ready? Ready. And set. 
Yeah. I don't know. After the lunch break, they were back in the church rehearsing a close-up of the same shot of Alec Baldwin pulling his gun. We were preparing for the shot of Mr. Baldwin sitting in the pew. It was basically from his waist to the top of his head, and, and his action was just to pull out the revolver. And in the story, he's pointing at, he's pointing the revolver at two U.S. Marshals that, that have come into the church. Alan Russ. For that specific shot, it was literally just supposed to be the gun being pulled out sideways. He was pulling it out. I'm sure he was getting used to that, that action. He was in communication with Ms. Hutchins about where to, where to point the gun. And then he drew it again, and um, it went off. Status 811, what's the location of your emergency? We need an ambulance out at Bonanza Creek Ranch right now. We've got two people shot on him if you shot accidentally. I think the first person I made eye contact with was was Helena, who was clearly injured. She was starting to go flush and uh, I think holding her, her right side. She said, I can't feel my legs. Oh, wait, so. Chris, we need a we need a, a, a seal. You have a seal? A seal? A seal. Um, I got a sterile glove, but I'm knocking. Do you want us? Okay. Are you there? Still there? Yeah. My hand is on it. Talking. Over there. Uh, Where's that? Uh, right shoulder. Stop. Oh, we're gonna get you. Wait, she shot her. She came in here and went across her chest. And okay. 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 You want air flight? Yeah, we all went in rock. Okay. Thirty-two Santa Fe. One female shot in the chest. Male shot in the stomach. While Helena was airlifted, Joel Souza was taken by ambulance to St. Vincent Hospital in Santa Fe. He was conscious the entire time, while also talking with the sheriff's deputy, trying to tell him what happened. At the same time, he was also asking about Helena. And it felt like somebody kicked me in the shoulder, and then I was down on my ass, and then I looked over and see the cinematographer, Helena Hutchins, your blood filming out of her back. She was between me and I think where the gun went off, and I think it went through her and into me. Do you know anything about what's going on with her? Is she okay? Back at the Bonanza Creek Ranch, investigators were trying to determine exactly what happened. Initially, they focused their attention on Alec Baldwin, who pulled the trigger, and the armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed. Where? Requesting that you and Ms. Gutierrez uh, conduct interviews back at the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office. Um, yeah, if, I mean, if you, you tell me what to do, okay. you tell me what to do. So. Um, we would appreciate that, and then we'll. When do you want me to do that? Uh, we're gonna probably go right now. Okay. What is your phone name? Hannah. Yeah, Andrea and I age. What the other? I'm the armor. No, at least I was. They end up taking both Alec Baldwin and Hannah Gutierrez Reed down to the sheriff's department to do formal interviews. The interview was an hour and 13 minutes long with Alec Baldwin. And at the very end, the lead detective tells him that Helena Hutchins has died. 
I do have some very unfortunate news to tell you. What? Um, she didn't make it. No. Yeah. Oh, it's all stuff off, though. Sorry. I got one of the little alerts on my phone, the little news alerts, and it was um, from, from, from the Hollywood Reporter, and I was like, oh, crap, that's the film that Helena's on. And then um, several hours later was when, when the, the news updated and said that it was her that had gotten shot and that, that she didn't make it. Coming up. This has been surely the worst situation I've ever been involved with. Alec is not exactly known worldwide for his even temperament. and the mindset behind your actions in this case. Tell me, why are you here? She needed payback. Payback with her life? Really funny, really. I'm laughing. Did you see me? I left. I don't want any of this. Are you not prepared today to take responsibility for any of your crimes? <laughs> Interview with a Killer, a Court TV original series, premieres next Sunday, 8, 7 Central, only on Court TV. Any suggestion that I am not complying with requests or orders or demands or search warrants about my phone, that that's a lie. The October 2021 shooting death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the set of Rust sent shockwaves through Hollywood and set off a media firestorm focused on the man who pulled the trigger, actor Alec Baldwin. Again, thank you to everybody who offered me support online um, to those people who offered me the opposite of support I understand <laughs> I understand where you're coming from there were many people in Hollywood who were publicly critical of Alec Baldwin and his handling of the weapon on set including fellow actor George Clooney who appeared on Mark Marin's podcast WTF Every single time I'm handed a gun on a set, every time, Mark, they hand me a gun, I look at it, I open it, I show it to the person I'm pointing it to, we show it to the crew. Every yeah. single take, you hand it back to the armor when you're done, you do it again. Maybe Alec did that. I Hopefully he did do that. The 800-pound gorilla in the room is that Alec is not exactly known worldwide for his even temperament. That has got to play in this investigation. At this point, Alec Baldwin, who was originally saying that he couldn't comment because of the investigation, decides then to do an interview with ABC News and George Stephanopoulos. He defends himself, saying that he never pulled the trigger. And he also responds to the critics like George Clooney, who said that he should have checked the gun. Well, there were a lot of people who felt it necessary to contribute some comment to the situation, which really didn't help the situation at all. You have your, if your protocol is you checking the gun every time, well, good for you. Good for you. What I was taught by someone years ago was we don't want the actor to be the last line of defense against a catastrophic breach of safety with the gun. For him to blanket statement say you don't want an actor to be in charge of doing this well we're not we're not putting you in charge of doing that we're just saying you need to make sure and be well aware of what is in this gun that is in your hands that you're going to be pointing at people whether or not alec baldwin should have checked the gun is up for debate what isn't is the fact that five other live rounds were found on set mixed in with dummy rounds Investigators pushed the armorer, 24-year-old Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, for answers. Why would there be live ammo on the set? I have no idea. Um, at this point, it's kind of seeming like somehow these were mixed in. Okay. Um, Did you ever do gun practice on this set? Never, not once. Never took the guns out for target practice, anything of the sort. No, and I think there would be like videos, pictures of that or anything. You know, everyone would be pretty stoked if we were going shooting on set. 
Okay. So Even on the weekends, there would at least be something. And you wouldn't suspect anyone to tell me that you were out there? I don't know why people would say that. Okay. Because 100% I was not. When it was learned that live ammunition made it onto the set, it triggered so many different hypothetical scenarios of what could have happened. How could live ammunition have made it onto that set? One of those that came up was the possibility that it could have been sabotaged. Did somebody deliberately plant a live bullet? On two separate instances, I came across the, the cart where they uh, moved the guns around. The armorist would bring them to set and set their cart up. And on two separate instances, I came across that cart basically unmanned. There were firearms and ammunition on top of the cart. It's just not something you see normally on a set. It felt wrong and it looked, you know, somebody, anybody could have done anything they wanted to those weapons and nobody would have known. Attorney Jason Bowles represents Hannah Gutierrez-Reed and he doesn't rule out sabotage. He believes there are people who wanted Hannah fired and that they could have planted those live rounds. Have a nice day. What if there had been some scheme to have live rounds on set, not to have anybody hurt, not to have anybody shot, but just have them on there so Hannah, they'll find them and Hannah's gonna be fired? Well, nobody ever even looked at that. The other obvious potential source of these live rounds was the ammunition supplier. And for this movie, it was a guy by the name of Seth Kenny. See, this is my dummy and blank room. Did Seth Kenny provide her with prop ammunition where he commingled live rounds with blank rounds? Seth Kenny was cleared in the criminal investigation and maintains that he believes the live rounds were brought on set by Hannah Gutierrez. Coming up, Alec Baldwin claims he didn't pull the trigger when he pointed the gun at Helena Hutchins. I never once said, never, that the gun went off in my hand automatically. Pretty good chance that he pulled the trigger, subconsciously we'll say. I want to ensure the victims, their families and the public that we are conducting a thorough and objective investigation. In the weeks and months after the Rust movie shooting, the focus on the investigation was centered on three people. The armorer, 24-year-old Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, assistant director David Halls, and actor Alec Baldwin, who was maintaining in interviews, including the one that he did with ABC's George Stephanopoulos, that he didn't pull the trigger when he shot and killed Helena Hutchins. It wasn't in the script for the trigger to be pulled. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. So you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. I, I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. As expected, criminal charges were filed against Hannah Gutierrez and David Halls. Prosecutors also decided to charge Alec Baldwin with involuntary manslaughter. Every person that handles a gun has a duty to make sure that if they are gonna handle that gun, point it at someone and pull the trigger, that it is not going to fire a projectile and kill someone. An actor doesn't get a free pass just because they're an actor. I never once said, never, that the gun went off in my hand automatically. I always said I pulled the hammer back and I pulled it back as far as I could. I never took a gun and pointed at somebody and clicked the thing. The FBI tested the gun and determined that the trigger was, in fact, likely pulled by Alec Baldwin. Armorer Scott Rasmussen, who interviewed for the Rust job, showed us why, to him, Baldwin's account that he only pulled the hammer back doesn't make sense. So if you pull the hammer back and it's not gonna fire by itself, and if you take a mallet, it's not gonna fire until you pull the trigger. In that church scene that was filmed before lunch, there's video footage of it. Alec Baldwin seems to have his finger on the trigger, or at least it's right next to the trigger. And Scott says that could explain how the gun went off. It's almost hard not, if you have your finger there, it's almost hard not to pull it and pull, and the, pull the trigger, yeah. 
Mr. Halls, um, with respect to the only count in this uh, criminal information, negligent use of a deadly weapon, unsafe handling, occurring on or about October 2021, in October 21st, 2021, in Santa Fe County, New Mexico. How do you wish to plead? Uh, no contest, Your Honor. Assistant Director David Halls accepted a plea deal and avoided jail time. The armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, was convicted for involuntary manslaughter and was sentenced to 18 months in prison. We find the defendant, Hannah Gutierrez, guilty of involuntary manslaughter as charged in count one. Alec Baldwin was originally offered a deal that would have kept him out of prison. My understanding, I believe, was that uh, lead special prosecutor had offered him a similar offer that had been extended to David Halls, uh, but then that was withdrawn by the state, uh, and then that the case proceeded to trial. And my job was just the way that I saw my job was to present the evidence to the jury and let the jury decide. Besides being the lead actor on Rust, Baldwin was also a producer, and prosecutors believed that he pushed the crew, specifically the young armorer, Hannah Gutierrez, to the point that it created an unsafe environment, which they believe contributed to the shooting. One more, one more, one more. I forgot the recoil stuff. No, no, right away, right away. Let's reload. Here we go. We should have had two guns, and both were reloading. I tell him safety is my main concern. I'm going at a fast pace, but I'm not going so fast that I'm going to stumble or I'm going to forget a step. I will not allow them to push me that far. Hannah, as the 24-year-old, should have told Mr. Baldwin, no, I'm not doing it like that, which she would never work on a movie set again, and she probably would have been fired the next day. We have the armorer. That's their job. That is literally why they are hired. They are the first line. Now, who's after that? David Halls. He too has an enormous responsibility because that's what he was hired to do. The idea that you have this actor on the back end. He's the last in the chain. These people had the obligation. Alec Baldwin has appeared in over a hundred movies. David Halls and Hannah Gutierrez are the ones that he trusted that what he was directed to do would be safe. And that wasn't his responsibility. If that scene were him in the church and he was gonna commit suicide, I guarantee you he would make sure that gun was totally empty before he rehearsed that scene. He would not just blindly take that, pull the trigger. He would make sure that the gun was empty because why? His life depended on it, but yet he didn't extend that courtesy to anybody else when he took that gun from Dave Halls. Coming up, the courtroom showdown. You told one of the witnesses who disagreed with you during an interview that you thought Mr. Baldwin was a I do not recall saying that. And the shocking end, which left Alec Baldwin in tears and the prosecution team at odds. I had written on a sticky note, I'm going to move to withdraw. I can't continue on this. We want to understand the mindset behind your actions in this case. Tell me, why are you here? She needed payback. Payback with her life? Very funny, really. I'm laughing. You see me, I laugh. I don't want any of this. Are you not prepared today to take responsibility for any of your crimes? <laughs> Interview with a Killer, a Court TV original series, premieres next Sunday, 8, 7 Central, only on Court TV. Mr. Baldwin, Mr. Baldwin anything to say this morning? Do you want to hear from Hannah Gutierrez? In July of 2024, with the world watching, Alec Baldwin went on trial in Santa Fe, New Mexico. This is Baldwin, anything to say? Baldwin was charged with involuntary manslaughter after he shot and killed cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the set of the movie Rust. Special prosecutor Carrie Morrissey and attorney Erlinda Johnson were handling the case for the state of New Mexico. We were confident. I was confident. The way he handled the firearm on October 21st, which was essentially pointed at another person, 
cocked it and pulled the trigger. So, which violated firearm safety rules of treating a firearm as though it's always loaded. It doesn't matter if it's a movie set. You are going to conclude and be convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that the only true and just verdict in this case so that true justice can be served is a verdict of guilty to involuntary manslaughter. Alec Baldwin had a team of attorneys led by Alex Spiro and Luke Nikas. This was an unspeakable tragedy, but Alec Baldwin committed no crime. He was an actor acting, playing the role of Harlan Rust. An actor playing a character can act in ways that are lethal, that just aren't lethal on a movie set. These cardinal rules, they're not cardinal rules on a movie set. And I don't have to tell you much more about this because you've all seen gunfights in movies. And the reason that can happen is because safety is ensured before the actor. In the gallery, Alec Baldwin's family, including his wife, Hilaria, and brother, Stephen. And the tension in the courtroom, especially between the prosecutor, Carrie Morrissey, and the defense team, was extremely high. The acrimony in the courtroom, I didn't like that. Now, we're on opposite sides of the courtroom. Each side is going to advocate for his or her position, for his or her side. But there's no need to have that absolute, I don't want to say hatred, but there's just this acrimony. I mean, I can't think of any other word. By day three of the state's case with the lead crime scene technician of the witness stand, it was evident the defense was focusing on how live rounds were found on the movie set. Was there any live ammunition on the pop truck? No. So I want to ask you something, um, Investigator Popo. Did that surprise you? No, not necessarily. During cross-examination of the crime scene technician, Alex Spiro, the lead defense counsel, begins to focus on the ammunition. What prosecutors didn't know was that the defense had been tipped off before trial about this man. His name, Troy Teske. Months before the trial, he had turned over some bullets to the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Department that he said were related to the Rust movie shooting. I don't know. I'll go around. That's fair. That's fair. What do you guys think about? Yeah, I don't care what you think. I just don't want to have it. Troy Teske, who had been uh, a good friend of the armorer's father, he traveled to Santa Fe and had brought some ammunition with him. And so then he proceeded to the sheriff's department to turn over this ammunition, representing that this was possible evidence that it may be related to rust. Troy Teske's ammunition was taken in by investigators, but it was filed under a different case number intentionally, which now was a big problem. Teske's in Santa Fe, sees what happens, shows up at the sheriff's office, as we heard from Ms. Popple, and delivers that live ammunition that Hancock had not preserved, that Ms. Morrissey had not collected. Troy Teske is the one who turned in this evidence. The um, evidence was tagged in under a separate case number. The report was also under that separate case number. It had not been turned over to the defense. The question now was because they had used a separate case number, had the state essentially withheld potential evidence from the defense? Prosecutor Carrie Morrissey downplayed the situation, telling the judge that she didn't believe the Troy Teske ammunition had anything to do with the Rust shooting. I understand from the witnesses that the ammunition was sourced originally from Thel Reed. It was sourced from Hannah's dad. It's not a match. Not only is it not a match when you look at it, it's not a match when you send it to the FBI and you ask them to conduct chemical testing. Um, so this is a wild goose chase. Coming up, the judge wants to see the Teske ammunition for herself. I kind of paced back and forth, wringing my hands, thinking, what do I do? Plus, a dramatic showdown as prosecutor Carrie Morrissey 
takes the witness stand trying to save her case. You don't like Mr. Baldwin very much, do you? And remembering cinematographer Helena Hutchins. She was on this cusp of achieving what she set out to achieve. Tell me what happened that night. Interview with a Killer exclusive trailer starts now. We really want to understand the mindset and motivations behind your actions in this case. One shot. One shot. You're going to believe what you're going to believe. No, no, no. This is all fake. This is false. I don't want any of this. How are we doing, guys? We're set. We're good? Mm -hmm. Okay. You've agreed to sit with me for an hour and truthfully answer my questions. Tell me, why are you here? Kill my wife, I guess. You make it sound like you're the victim here. Exactly. She needed payback for what she did. Payback with her life? You meet someone and they make you angry and you shoot them. Don't be saying that was a made-up story? You don't remember what her dead body looked like? Did it occur that you had just gone from troubled teen to teenage murder? Are you not prepared today to take responsibility for any of your crimes? <laughs> Oh, yeah, come on with it. Very funny, really. I'm laughing. You see me, I laugh. Interview with a Killer, a Court TV original series, premieres next Sunday, 8, 7 Central, only on Court TV. By the end of the first week of trial, the prosecution's case against actor Alec Baldwin was in jeopardy. The defense was accusing investigators and prosecutor Kerry Morrissey of essentially hiding evidence after ammunition brought to the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office was not included in the Rust movie shooting case file. Prosecutor Morrissey claimed the ammunition was irrelevant, but Judge Mary Marlowe Summer wanted to see it for herself, ordering that the ammunition be brought in so that she could see one way or another if it resembled the bullet that killed cinematographer Helena Hutchins. The judge orders the crime scene technician to open the bag and to begin removing the bullets by categories. And so they start being removed. And uh, I noticed a lot of them did not look at all like the ammunition that was found on the set of rust. However, three bullets were identical to the live ammunition that was found on the set of rust. So at that point, the judge takes a break. Three of the Teskey bullets that were intentionally filed under a different case number were indeed a match to the bullet that killed cinematographer Helena Hutchins. This was clearly evidence the defense should have had before trial. Now the judge and prosecutor Erlinda Johnson had to decide what to do next. Something in the pit of my stomach did not feel good. This just doesn't feel right. And you know when something just doesn't feel right, it just, you feel disgusted. For everybody else headed to the courtroom. I went to the bathroom and I kind of paced back and forth in the ladies' room, kind of wringing my hands, thinking, what do I do? Do I just walk out? Do I resign? This just doesn't feel right. At this point, Prosecutor Johnson says she had recommended that the state drop the case against Alec Baldwin, but lead prosecutor Carrie Morrissey wanted to continue. And so I walked out of the ladies' room, and at that point I thought, I I'm going, this, I'm out, I'm going to resign. So I sat down at council table. I had written on a sticky note, I I'm going to move to withdraw, I can't continue on this. And so we asked to approach, and then that's when, when we asked to approach, I asked the judge to allow me to withdraw from the case. With her case crumbling on national television, prosecutor Carrie Morrissey decided to double down, taking the stand herself to try to explain away what happened. Are you calling yourself as a witness, or do you want Mr. Spiro to call you as a witness? It doesn't matter to me. How do you want to do it? Prosecutor Morrissey essentially argued that when the ammunition was logged under a different case number, 
it wasn't to hide evidence from the defense. It was because she believed it had nothing to do with the Rust shooting. Those rounds had never left Arizona. The filming of Rust was in the state of New Mexico. So ammunition that is in the state of Arizona that has never left Arizona did not strike me that it had significant evidentiary value. Then, oh, oh and I will, tell, I will say, I believe I actually saw a photo of it at that point in time. I was able to look at the ammunition myself and it was visibly dissimilar than the rounds from the set of rust. As a former prosecutor, I think about what it is to stand in a courtroom and believe what it is that you're arguing. But what happens when in the midst of that, as the entire world watches, you start to realize that it's dissolving underneath you and she needs out. The problem is, is there's nowhere for her to go. And so she starts to simply lose it on national television. Then the gloves came off. Baldwin's attorney, Alex Spiro, went on the attack. You don't like Mr. Baldwin very much, do you? I actually really appreciate Mr. Baldwin's movies. I really appreciated uh, the acting that he did on Saturday Night Live, and I really appreciate his politics. You told one of the witnesses who disagreed with you during an interview that you thought Mr. Baldwin was a I don't recall saying that. You called him an arrogant to another witness. I don't believe I did, I don't recall. Do you deny that? Without knowing what you're talking about? I, I, all I can tell you is that I can't respond if I don't know what you're talking about. With regard to the lead special prosecutor, there absolutely was a lot of acrimony between her and the defense team that was really, in my opinion, unnecessary. With Alec Baldwin and his family in tears, Judge Mary Marlowe Summer made her decision. The state's discovery violation has injected a needless, incurable delay into the instant jury trial. Dismissal with prejudice is warranted to ensure the integrity of the judicial system and the efficient administration of justice. Your motion to dismiss with prejudice is granted. Alec Baldwin was free to go. The judge ruled he could not be retried. This case was over. The unfortunate part is I don't think that she set out to hide this evidence from the defense intentionally. I think she sincerely believed this is immaterial, irrelevant to the Baldwin case. But I don't believe that that was a, um, a wise decision. No, we didn't. We did everything humanly possible to bring justice uh, to Helena and to her family, and we're proud of the work that we did. Uh, again, we disagree with the court's decision, but we have to respect it. The decision of the court does not exonerate Alec Baldwin because it is not a decision on the merits of the prosecution's case and the evidence that they were going to present against Alec Baldwin. When, when, I, when I think about Helene, I think about the, the potential that she had as, as an artist, as, as a cinematographer, um, I, I knew that she was going to go on to do great things. She, she, she had already accomplished really great things, and I knew that that trajectory of hers was, was, was going to continue to go up. We lost a friend, and, 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 and she was a wife and, 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 a, and a mother and um, a daughter and a, a sister someone very special to, to, to everybody in, 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 in our personal lives. I just hope that that during all this it doesn't get lost the 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 fantastic person that Helena was. Nobody goes in to this expecting that they're gonna die or get seriously injured on set. If anything good comes out of the tragedy of Helena's death, it's that we can phase out the use of real weapons on set so that this never happens again. The movie Rust was eventually finished. Helena Hutchins' husband was named an executive producer, allowing the family to receive some of the net proceeds 
from the film. As for Alec Baldwin, because of the judge's ruling, he can never be retried in this case unless a court of appeals reverses the judge's decision. I'm Ted Rollins. Thank you for watching Victim to Verdict.